If you have wide sweeping views in your game, using the standard LOD group may not improve your performance enough to make it playable. In this video, we're going to see how we can implement a hierarchical LOD or HLOD or HLOD, I'll say all of those as a video, to greatly improve the performance of your game when you have a large number of objects displayed at a distance. This is a free tool that Unity's provided to us that does a really great job at reducing the number of draw calls, which vastly increases our frames per second. We'll go from having somewhere between three and 4,000 draw calls down to 161. Hey, Chris here from Lom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you improve the performance of your game. Now you might ask, what is hierarchical LOD? Hierarchical LOD is a system that works very similar to your standard LOD group. If you're not familiar with that, LOD groups take the distance from the camera and start replacing the full high quality high polygon mesh with simpler and simpler meshes the farther the camera is away from that particular object. Hierarchical LOD does the exact same thing with groups of objects. What this system does is automatically takes all of the child elements under whatever you put the HLOD script on, subdivides it by the chunk size that we provide, combines all the meshes within each zone or each quadrant, and as the camera gets farther away, it will start replacing the high quality meshes with combined meshes for each quadrant. And as you go farther away, the quadrants get larger and larger combined meshes are used. This significantly reduces the number of draw calls because more and more objects are batched together in a single draw call. This can provide vast performance benefits when we have very large scenes and distant objects. Conversely, when you're in the middle of a big city, it'll provide maybe mediocre performance improvements because you're not able to replace as big groups of objects with those bigger combined meshes. Today, we're gonna to look at the medieval interiors demo scene from the Astrofish Games Polystyle Medieval Village asset that was free with a promo code recently on the asset store. You can always find the latest sales in the description of my video. This scene is a great example for looking at hierarchical LODs because they have not combined any meshes and the performance is pretty terrible. Even with static batching, which I'm seeing right now, I've got 11,000 batches saved, 15,000 batch draw calls, and we still have 5.9 thousand draw calls. This is great for demonstrating the modular asset, but not so great for our performance. We're going to be using Unity's free hierarchical LOD system, which unfortunately does not support the package manager, so you have to actually clone this yourself using the git command line and update the submodules. Once you've checked it out, you can copy paste whatever you need into your project. Or if you're a more advanced user, you can set up this as a submodule for your own Git repository. The scene is actually set up really well for us to use hierarchical LOD because it already has all of the things we want to be LOD'd under a single parent. I'm gonna set up a hierarchical LOD across the entire level. First thing you wanna do is attach HLOD script to the parent of whatever you want to be considered for LODs. The documentation that is provided doesn't cover all of these, so I spent a little bit of time investigating how they work. The chunk size, unsurprisingly, is how big of a chunk we're gonna use whenever we're splitting up the level, considering which groups will be used for each chunk of the HLOD algorithm. Immediately below that, we have your typical LOD type of slider. In this particular case right now, if a mesh has a projected AABB that is greater than 30% of the screen, is gonna be considered high quality and we're gonna probably use the original mesh. Once we hit the low quality, that's when the HLOD tree starts using substituted meshes. We can also optionally set up whether we want to ignore objects underneath a specific size. In this case, I'm just gonna include everything. In terms of a space splitter, they only provide one out of the box, but this is set up so you can define your own if you want to implement your own custom algorithm for defining how you're gonna split up the space. I couldn't really find out what the loose size was about. Regardless of the size that I input for a loose size, I got really similar results, so I'm not really sure what this actually does. You're probably safe to leave this alone at five. The subtree size really just breaks down the HLOD into smaller subtrees or very large subtrees. I think it's easiest to understand that if we take a look at some examples, which we'll do a little bit later in the video. What's really cool here is you can also have it automatically simplify the mesh for you using the Unity Mesh Simplifier. It does not give you all of the controls that come with the Unity Mesh Simplifier. I recently covered how you can generate LODs automatically using Unity Mesh Simplifier. I've got a link in the description and a card on the screen to that video if you wanna see how you can generate simplified meshes in editor for any model. This one has a really simplistic version and in this particular case, because the models are already pretty low poly, the simplification didn't give me very good results. And that simplifies the combined meshes that we use in the HLOD. 
for the batcher. Generally speaking, I think you want to use a material preserving batcher. It preserves whatever material was used in the first place. And this is a really great scene because all of these models are using the same material. The simple batcher will actually combine all of the meshes possible and generate a new material and automatically pack textures to give you better draw call result. The problem there is if you have a bunch of different materials with a bunch of different material properties, you're probably not going to get a very good result. That one doesn't make sense to use here because we're already only using one or two materials. Streaming is something that's kind of an advanced feature. Right now it's only giving me unsupported, but you can also have addressable streaming. That gives you the ability to not have to have everything loaded in memory all the time and dynamically load with addressables those other meshes. If you're working on a large scale game with a lot of different models and you really need to watch out for that memory usage, that's the streaming one you'd want to use. The reason I don't see that as an option here is I haven't installed the addressables package in this case. We've got all of these different compression formats per platform, which is super cool. And I'm not sure what user data serializer is. There's not even another option other than empty user data serializer. So we're just going to leave that one alone. You can choose where the generated models go. So I'm just gonna leave that as the assets folder for now and click generate. It's gonna do a bunch of mesh combining and a bunch of mesh generation. So this takes a little bit of time. It takes even more time if you start trying to simplify it. And you can see that this generated me 223 megabytes worth of mesh data. So we have a fully combined mesh and then a bunch of smaller combined ones that we'll use for different chunks. You can preview all of these in this generated object and see how did it split up the objects, which ones are combined and see exactly what's gonna be rendered for each section. The only other thing you need to do is attach to the camera, the HLOD camera recognizer. We click play with that we'll see immediately we dropped from about 6k to about 4k draw calls so somewhat better but remember we're in the middle of the level so we're showing a lot of high quality meshes a bunch of not combined meshes and farther away we started getting the benefits from the h log system the best case scenario is if i zoom out to here we can see my batches are now 161 i only have 161 draw calls even though we still have a very large number of triangles and vertices drawn, my performance is amazing. And the town still looks like a town. If you go to window HLOD debug window, we can see the bounds of the tree that are currently being drawn. As I come in, we can see we now have four chunks and you can see highlighted in the debug window exactly what's being drawn. I have number one, number two, number three, and number four. And if you're super curious, if you expand the hierarchy to just to see how it works, we have the HLOD root and it's activating and deactivating different objects based on what's currently in view. As we zoom out, we see the root one becomes active and those other objects become inactive. As I start going back in, the one, two, three, and four become active. As I get closer, we'll see three and four chunks go away and we get the smaller chunks again. So one, like three, two, three, 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 four, four, one, four, two, four, three, four, four. And at this point we have all of the smallest chunks currently rendered. And as I come in a little bit closer, you've seen the hierarchical LOD went away and now the original objects are active again. So we have all of these super small pieces, which are individually LOD'd as well. And this doesn't really make sense for it to have like each individual piece with an LOD on it. Realistically, you'd want to combine all of these little pieces into a single mesh for each house, for each bridge and all those kinds of things. I get why they left it like this so you can see exactly how they put together all these components. But for your actual game, you want to combine all of those and it really improve performance a lot. If you decide you don't like the results, you can just destroy, tweak the settings and generate it again. In this case, let's generate a subtree. We'll say a subtree size of 100 by default, leave that alone and generate again. Now that one's done, we can see several objects are generated. Prefab subtree zero, prefab subtree one. All of these are significantly smaller. Let's see how it compares in performance. So we can see that each subtree is evaluated independently instead of calculating the entire HLOD tree all at once from one giant parent, we have one parent and then four sub areas. The performance can be better depending on your use case. In this particular case, it didn't perform as well. Now let's talk about a smaller chunk size. So before we had chunk size of 30, so we only had one big LOD. I moved down the chunk size to 15, so half of what it was before. Now we see that the HLOD tree will be generated with three levels. We can see the performance is pretty similar. We already have the 3.9 thousand draw calls at our starting location. We can see that some of the back ones are at a higher LOD, meaning lower quality, and most of the ones close by me are using the best quality. With smaller chunk sizes, we can see there are much smaller cubes, so more frequently we'll see them updating, which results in faster reduction of draw calls and faster conversion into bigger combined meshes. So the smaller chunk size we do, the more computationally expensive it is to calculate 
on the tree, but also the more granular access we have to swapping out meshes and also the more meshes actually get generated. At runtime, that HLOD script doesn't really do anything. It's not important for runtime. It's destroyed immediately. The default HLOD controller is added to any object where we had the HLOD script there. And this is the runtime controller where we can see all the tree nodes. And this controls which object should be active, inactive at any given moment based on the bounds and this kind of stuff. You can change the control mode to manual and preview what does each one look like from any point in your scene. As always with optimization, your mileage will vary based on your scene configuration, the tool configuration, and the target hardware that you're targeting. Hierarchical LOD is a wonderful tool that can really improve the performance of your game in some scenarios. In some other scenarios, it might provide moderate benefits over a typical LOD. This is a free tool that Unity provides to us and has really a lot of functionality built in. It is not a full like 1.0 release right now, but it does have a lot of really awesome features. And I can tell they put a lot of thought into it because there is the addressable system support in there that would allow you to even further improve the performance without having to load everything in memory all the time. There's one thing I want to say about how I had to make this work, and I don't know if that's related to this tool or if it's related to the asset, but I had to make a double-sided shader to make it look correct at the farthest out level of detail. This is really easy because you can just make a standard shader and tell it to do call off and it'll render properly. But the first time I did this using just the default standard shader where it only renders on one face, not rendering the back faces, you can tell that there was something wrong there. If you got value out of this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy or just click the join button right here on YouTube. You can get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Get your name up here on the screen and some other cool perks too. At the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, Ify Obelis, and Paul Barry. At the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen and Andrew Albright. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.